You were born on September 17, 1928. How young are you? 87. <laughs> How old do you feel? <clears throat> How old do I feel? How old do I look? <laughs> I feel, seriously, sometimes I feel quite old. Uh, sometimes I look in the mirror and I say, where did all that go to? But then there are other times that I feel very, very good about myself. I'm one of those lucky people that has lived long enough and really liked my life. We'll talk uh, about it. Don't tell it all right oh, now. Oh, I'm not going to tell. No, no. But, so I, 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 feel, I feel older, but there's a young heart beating there, and there's a, a will to like people. I like people. I like touching them, as you know. I like feeling them. I like sex. <laughs> so, so. That's going to be fun. Tell us a little bit the uniform business and how that was perceived by the industry. And was, did you get respect for doing uniforms? How was that? Well, felt? how did that feel? You know, having been in the hot center of the business for, through the 60s and early 70s, uh, and then losing your business, your big business, and uh, going into what I call a freelance position, it's tricky. Uh, I've been able to work it, but it's very tricky. And when I was uh, in the early 70s, I got a call from uh, the president of Avis, no, not for the president, from, from Doyle, Dane, and Barenbach, who represented them. And they, the president of Avis wanted a new uniform. And I said, a uniform? And uh, they were in Garden City. And I, so I just took myself out to Garden City. I met him, and I thought, gee, that's a fun idea. That could, that could you know, as a sidebar. And I took it seriously. And the uniform, I mean, they were red, head to toe. Could anything be worse? And, and I put put them in red and gray, and suddenly that everybody thought I was a genius in that business. And from there on, I decided I could do that. And so I became a part of Hart Shafter and Marks and did TW. The TWA uniform is quite extraordinary. Uh, but I went, I mean, I have so many stories, funny stories, interesting stories. Well, we did, a, we did a, a, a blouse for TWA, and uh, it was all haberdashery. And, it was spelled T-W-A, 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 but you could hardly see it. And we, work, we worked it up, we mapped it out, and we, we printed 36,000 yards. And when I got the first yardage through, what they had done was put, there was no space between T-W-A. Can you picture, spell T-W-A, T-W-A? You read it as the first four words, four letters, and then the next four letters. 36,000 yards. <laughs> I mean, it was extraordinary. Uh, but we had, there were, there were I mean, <laughs> the McDonald's. They're still figuring it out. So. I know. The McDonald's is, is really quite a fascinating story because I competed for the McDonald's business and I lost. And I lost to a knit company. Uh, I can't remember their name, but they convinced McDonald's that they could make knit uniforms. And I, call, I wrote a letter to the president of McDonald's, Mr. Kroc at the time, and uh, I said, you guys are crazy. I mean, that will never work. That's going to stretch. It's going to, and besides which, every, it was like an antarja of McDonald's, 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 all over the damn thing. It was hysterical. It just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And the McDonald's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got a call. I was, at, uh, the, I was at the Beverly Hills Hotel around the pool. And you know, everybody wants to get called around the Beverly Hills Hotel. I didn't want to get called, but I kept getting these calls from McDonald's. We apologize. We, we want you to come back. We want you to come back. And that was 15 years. I worked for them for 15 years, which was really, it was wonderful. I should have taken their stock. I should not have gotten paid. I should have taken their stock, but I didn't. And I really, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, are there any young designers out today that you are impressed by or are you intrigued by and watching? The only thing I feel about young designers, I have sympathy for them, pity for them, because the business is so sharp-edged, it's so, it's so elbow-oriented. Uh, they, they become successful so quickly. There are lots of good, real talents. I don't know if they're being allowed to develop in a way that we were when we were younger. I mean, I spent years as a second and third and fourth designer. Not that I was 
And I got better because of it. I think very often these days, some of them, and you can see in the attrition, uh, some of them just go by the boards too quickly because they've, they're very talented. They don't keep their eye on, the, on, on, on their, what they're doing. The one thing I keep telling everyone, you must have an alter ego. You must have somebody who takes the business aspect off of what you do. Because if you, I think if I had had that in my life at Mr. Mord, I could have been maybe the biggest thing that ever happened. I never could find, and maybe that was my fault, I could never find the alter ego that could run the business in a way that would build it. And that's what young designers have to do today because it's tough. Their demands of the stores are extraordinary. Demands of the, of the profit margin are so extraordinary. It's taken the guts out of creativity. We talk about it all the time at the board meetings. Demands of social media. Yeah, it's they, the social media. They current. Is there anything that you still wanted to accomplish at CFDA that you didn't? At the CFDA? I think, I think Diane has done what had to be accomplished. Um, we, sometimes I miss the Gemüglichkeit of, of, of uh, the camaraderie of a smaller organization, but that's just my feeling. We have 502 members or three members now. It's a lot of membership to keep happy. Uh, it's a lot of membership, but it's powerful. Power is the name of the, tw the, the big word of the 21st century. If you have power, if you're plugged into power, somehow things seem to work for you. Is there something in your life that you still haven't accomplished that you want to? I haven't, I haven't sung at the Met yet. <laughs> no, I... Uh, I, I said before, I have a very, very good life. I still work. I still have the, the fear of failure that I think most creative people do have. Uh, I don't know what I would do if I would stop. I, I've, I've had the longest written memoir that's not published that anybody in the business. I wrote it myself. It's quite beautiful. It tells no dirty stories. Maybe I have to do that. Uh, maybe if I finished that and really got it done and went to the right person to lead me in a direction. But I'm very pleased. Look at here I am with a 92nd Street Y talking to all these people. I, I feel great about it. Well, on, on that note, we've gone over our time we limit. We did. And um, I think everybody's got plans. And Sam, thank you. Thank it's you. Thank you, everybody.